Welcome to lecture 4 in Vehicle Propulsion Systems. This lecture will be about the main topic of the course, which will introduce electromobility to you, and we will cover hybrid powertrains, different topologies, and do component modeling. The results that come out of this lecture will be used in hand in assignment number 2. The contents of this lecture will be repetition, then we will go into an introduction to hybrid electric vehicles, where we will look at the potential, why are hybrid electric vehicles introduced, and we will make a short coverage of electric propulsion systems before we go into the main topic, which is the overview of hybrid electric configurations. And when we have covered the configurations, we will go in and cover the components that we see inside the configurations so that you can build a complete vehicle model and analyze it with respect to fuel economy. Starting with the repetition, we have been working very much with the vehicle motion equation that's essentially Newton's second law for a vehicle. And we have been working very much with the tractive force requirement from a driving mission. Driving missions are for example specified as velocity profiles where the speed is given as a function of time. Based on the profiles we can extract information that is relevant for fuel economy. And you are working right now with extracting the cycle data and you can make that into a final equation here that we can use to estimate the fuel consumption based on vehicle parameters. You have also seen measured engine maps and how it can be represented as a Willens line approximation. We have the Willens line is an affine relationship that's a linear function that has an offset. And from this we get the engine efficiency which is the slope from the origin here up to the point here. So the slope tells what the efficiency is of that point. We have also looked at different ways of modeling the powertrain and we have gone into the quasi-static modeling of powertrains where inverse modeling is used to capture the behavior. Um, in QSS tool, it's a tool prepared where you have driving profiles available that you can input to the vehicle and to a gearbox and an engine configuration to estimate the fuel consumption. And this QSS implementation is very time effective for making complete cycle evaluations of a vehicle fuel consumption. That was the repetition. Now we go into the hybrid electric vehicles to start by defining the hybrid electric vehicle. It is characterized that it has two different energy storages. One energy carrier that we're using to fuel the vehicle and then we have another energy storage on board. So this is for a hybrid electric vehicle. We can also have plug-in hybrid electric vehicles where the electric energy also can be charged into the vehicle. So the core definition is about the energy storages that we have in a vehicle. We also have two different components to drive the vehicle forward. We have a combustion engine and larger electric machines than the normal starter motor and the generator. These are up-dimensioned to be able to cope with more power and utilization over longer periods of time than what the normal starter motor and the generator is. Hybrid vehicles has potential to save energy utilizing several mechanisms. One benefit is achieved by downsizing the engine while maintaining the maximum power requirement of the vehicle which gives the same acceleration gradeability. The benefit comes from the well-known fact that a vehicle with a smaller engine is more effective than a vehicle with a big engine. Another benefit is that we can recover energy during decelerations. We can do recuperation as we have been discussing in previous lectures. We can also optimize the energy distribution between the prime mover. We can select the electric machine when the electric path is more efficient than the combustion engine. We can select the combustion engine when the combustion engine is most efficient. And we can do this selection depending on how much available electrical energy we have. We can also eliminate idle fuel consumption by turning off the engine and save a lot of idling time because idling is wasting fuel. There is also an opportunity to eliminate the clutching losses by engaging the engine only when the speeds match. Then we are eliminating the friction losses. The possible improvements are counteracted by a 10-30% to 30 increase in weight and as you know from previous lectures, 
the weight is one of the most important factors for fuel economy. Before going into the hybrids, we start with electric vehicles. Here you see a basic electric vehicle topology where we have a battery that is powering the electric machine that drives the vehicle forward. The diagram at the bottom of the slide shows the energy paths of the vehicle. So we have the battery, we have the power electronics. The power electronics controls the power to the electric machine that mechanically is coupled to the transmission and the vehicle. The transmission can be a final drive or a differential drive that allows to have separate speeds of the right and left wheel. This type of diagram will be used where we're using thick lines for mechanic systems and we're using thin lines for the electric system. And these lines represent uh, where we can send power. So we can send power back and forth between the battery and the power electronics and also electrical energy here between the power electronics and the electric machine. We have mechanical couplings between the electric machine and the transmission component and the vehicle. Electric vehicles contain the basic elements of hybrid electric vehicles, but they are not interesting for control optimization that we will work with very much in this course. So we will not give it in-depth coverage in this course. They are of course interesting from a design point of view and there's a possibility to do an extra task that is about dimensioning of an electric vehicle selecting the battery for a certain range and selecting the electrical machine for a certain acceleration performance. If you're interested in doing such an extra task send me an email and you can get a project specification for it. Some drawbacks compared to conventional vehicle we have longer refueling time which leads to range anxiety among many potential buyers. Since you need to spend some time for refueling, you're worried, will the electric energy last all the way until I come to my destination? It has also low range to weight because the batteries are heavy and it's also a large investment due to that batteries are expensive when we need to have large batteries to cope with a complete driving mission. Despite this, they have moved from being niche vehicles to receive public acceptance and there's a lot of coverage in the media with electric vehicles and plug-in electric vehicles. Uh, there's also development of plugless vehicles so that you can charge while you're driving. There are electric roads. In Sweden there are four different projects looking at electric roads. Then we also have a range extender, so you have a basic electric vehicle and then you add a combustion engine and a tank and this is a transition to series hybrids. I will talk more about series hybrid vehicles in a few slides. The electric vehicle is actually as old as the car. Many cars in the early 20th century were electric. Then the combustion engine took over and dominated for 100 years. Electric vehicles have also been available in applications that require zero emissions. We have indoor vehicles, forklifts and mine vehicles. We have also in-city distribution vehicles and also if there is a zero emission vehicle requirement then electric vehicles are also a key option. Electric vehicles received attention as niche vehicles. You have the Lightning which was a British car that it didn't make it to production, but uh, it got a lot of attention in media. We have the Tesla with the Tesla Roadster. After the introduction, it has received public acceptance and uh, adoption. And now we have many electric vehicles available. We have the Nissan Leaf, um, which was one of the first uh, low cost vehicles. We have the Tesla Model S and we have the Polestar 2 here as examples of electric vehicles. The next step now is to look at the hybrid electric vehicle configurations. We look at the series, the parallel and the combined hybrid. Before going into the configurations, we have some classifications of hybrids. We have the series, we have the parallel and we have the series parallel or combined hybrid. There are additional types that cannot be classified into these three basic types. They are sometimes called complex hybrids. We first start with the series hybrid topology. In a series hybrid, we have the fuel tank that delivers fuel to the combustion engine. The combustion engine delivers mechanical energy to a generator and the generator delivers electrical energy to the power electronics that can be used either to charge up the battery or the power electronics can 
send the electricity to the electric machine that drives the vehicle forward. And we have a transmission here once again to be able to decouple the wheels. There are also configurations appearing where you're seeing in-wheel motors. Then you don't need to have this uh, decoupling but the in-wheel motors can control the wheel speeds independently. Here we once again have a sketch of this topology with the power transfer couplings. We have the combustion engine that is coupled to the generator that goes into the power electronics and there we have the option to send the energy to the battery or to the electric machine that drives the transmission to the vehicle. And we can also do regenerative braking so we can take energy here and send it to the battery. Another view of the same series hybrid but with more uh, mechanistic illustrations of uh, the components. So we have uh, the gear part here, we have the gearbox and then we have the final drive. And we have the energy storage, power bus and uh, you see the mechanical couplings and you see the electrical couplings separate here. This image is taken from the advisor documentation. Now we have reached the core of this course which is related to the different modes and power flows of the vehicles and especially we will look at how to control the vehicle and selecting the different modes and selecting the power flows to optimally utilize either combustion engine or the battery to get the best fuel economy. What we will be working with is the control signal which is the ratio between the power we take from the battery in relation to the propulsion need for power that we have. So when we are running it in battery drive mode, we are taking all the energy from the battery and we are passing it out to the vehicle. So in this case, the control signal is one. The reason why I put approximate here is that we will have some losses here. So the vehicle power requirement will be slightly less than the battery power requirement due to the losses that we have here. But we use this control signal here to say that we take all power need from the battery. The next mode is battery recharge mode. When we are recharging the battery, we are taking fuel energy to drive the vehicle and also to recharge the battery so that we can increase the state of charge and at the later stage drive all electric. Then we have the hybrid drive mode where we are taking the power both from the combustion engine side and from the battery to drive the vehicle forward. And in this case U is bigger than zero and less than one because the battery is not providing all the energy but it's uh, helping the combustion engine or you can see it as it gets help from the combustion engine. The final mode is regenerative braking mode where we are decelerating so we have available kinetic energy here that we are recovering by putting that energy into the battery. In this case also U is equal to 1. The next topology is uh, parallel hybrids where we have two parallel tracks where we have one track from the fuel tank to the combustion engine to the mechanical output and we have one track from the battery to the electric machine and out to the vehicle. This topology here shows how these components are mechanically connected together so we have the parallel paths is from fuel here and from electrochemical energy here. Another more mechanistic view of the same system is that we have the electrical energy storage, the motor for drive, we have the combustion engine with clutch and the torque couplers, we have the gearbox and we have the final drive out to the wheels. Coming to the different modes for parallel hybrid, we have the same definition of the control signal and we are taking in zero emission mode all energy from the battery and driving the vehicle. In battery recharge mode we have chemical energy from the combustion engine that is used to both drive the vehicle forward and to recharge the battery. So the control signal is less than one because there is a difference in direction between the vehicle need and the power input into the battery. When we come to power assist mode once again we have fuel from the combustion engine and we are adding energy from the battery side to the vehicle. This mode is also sometimes called e-boosting mode 
where we are boosting the power using the electricity. Then we have the regenerative braking mode where we are taking the kinetic energy from the vehicle and placing it into the battery so that we can use that energy later in an acceleration for example or during driving. Finally we have the conventional vehicle mode when we're running the vehicle only on the combustion engine and then since we are not using any power from the electric side the control signal is zero. In a full parallel hybrid configuration it is often possible to disconnect the engine so that we can run the vehicle all electric if we want to. As an option to this we have the mild parallel hybrid where we have the same two parallel paths one from fuel through combustion engine to uh, the drivetrain and from one from the electric to the drivetrain but in mild parallel hybrids we cannot disconnect the engine so in the mild parallel hybrid these cannot be operated independently and this shows here that we have everything in series we cannot take away the combustion and, uh, and disconnect it uh, it's always sitting on the same shaft as the electric machine the combined hybrid the role model for that one is the original Toyota Prius vehicle where we have the fuel tank, we have the combustion engine and the combustion engine acts on a planetary gear. And then we have a generator that can charge the battery and then we have an electric machine that can be used to drive the vehicle forward and they are sitting at different connections here on the planetary gear set. The sketch of topology is like this. Where we have the combustion engine, planetary gear set, the electric machine, the generator and we have the power electronics. So we have the electrical system and we have the mechanical system with, with the final drive and the differential out to the vehicle. In this sketch we are using four mechanical shafts even though that the planetary gear only has three connections. I will show you later in the sketch how they are connected together. Actually the electric machine is sitting on this shaft in the Toyota Prius but it shows that we have four different things to play with. We have combustion engine, we have generator, we have electric machine and we have the vehicle. All of these are connected together with the planetary gear set. This is another view that's more mechanistic. We have the planetary gear set and here you see how the generator is connected to the sun while the combustion engine is connected to the planets and the electric machine and the output shaft sits on the ring and controls the final drive. The planetary gear set has the main advantage that it can be used to decouple the rotational speed of the combustion engine and the rotational speed of the wheels for the vehicle so that we can place the combustion engine in the most efficient operating point independently of the velocity of the vehicle. Then we use the generator to control the gear range of it so that we reach the best operating point. Another thing that can be noted is that uh, the fuel converter is acting on the planets and this means that if we are doing nothing with the generator, if the generator is torque free then it will just rotate along freely so we, would, we are not able to transfer any mechanical energy from the combustion engine out to the wheels. Of course the electric machine can drive the vehicle forward when the fuel converter is off and the generator is let free. So we have a possibility to run all electric drive without running the engine in this case. But the core problem that you will see in the next slide is that if we want to run the combustion engine and drive the vehicle on the combustion engine we need to use electric energy to or from the generator to control the gear ratio and this can of course be used either to charge the battery or to give energy to the electric machine. This is now the representation of the conventional vehicle mode when we're driving the vehicle forward with the combustion engine and in this case we're driving the vehicle forward we are loading the planetary gear set with the generator and that power is transmitted to the electric machine that is given to the shaft that transmits the power out to the wheels so in this case we have additional loss in this case all the power that the engine is generating does not go all out to the wheels since we have a little bit of power loss in the generator and the power electronics and in the electric machine there are some losses generated by this loop the advantage 
is that we still can place the engine in its most efficient operating point to get the best efficiency out of the vehicle thanks to this decoupling but we have this uh, loop that is consuming a little bit of power in the power assist mode we are running the combustion engine and we are also taking energy from the battery out here here we also have the loop the loop will always be in place whenever we are taking mechanical energy from the combustion engine as you saw in the planetary gear arrangement on the previous slide to make this coupling from combustion engine to the wheels we need to engage the sun which is connected to the generator when we're running all electric mode we don't need to utilize the generator but we can take the electric power from the battery out to the electric machine and out to the wheels when we run battery recharge mode it's natural to just use that path uh, from the generator and then drive the vehicle forward. And in regenerative braking mode we can stop the combustion engine and we can take the energy in through the generator and place it into the battery. Finally we have combined hybrid without planetary gears where we can have mechanical couplings uh, with the electric machine and transmission. We could also think of placing this uh, combustion engine here. The main difference from the parallel is that we have an extra path here for generating electricity we don't need to go through the electric machine here so there is a degree of freedom here we could also put a degree of freedom but we could also give it more degrees of freedom by placing the combustion engine here and making it uh, detachable when you're designing hybrids you can think of utilizing components of varying sizes and the degree of hybridization is related to how big electric machine have you chosen in relation to the engine power. That is the definition of the degree of hybridization. Electric vehicle uh, does not have any um, engine so then it's 100%. The implemented hybrid concepts in cars have a degree of hybridization varying between 15 and 55 percent showing that in the hybrid vehicles there's still a dominating propulsion part with combustion engines then we have mild hybrids where the degree of hybridization varies between 2 to 15 percent the different features that we can think of in hybrid is to turn off the engine so that we're reducing the idling losses we can do the regenerative braking we can um, assist the combustion engine and we could also think of doing all electric drive and then we have the plug-in hybrid where we can do a recharging of batteries using the wall plug the concepts that we see we have the micro hybrid which is more or less only the start and stop we cannot run the vehicle with the electric machine we can only turn the engine off but the starter and generator are up dimension slightly so that we can do more starts and stops than we did with normal vehicles previously mild hybrids we have the same stop and go we have regenerative braking and we have the electric machine that can assist the driving finally the full hybrid we can also do driving with only the electric machine and the plug-in is up to recharge the battery from the wall plug before entering the modeling of the component we'll talk a little bit about the state of charge and it's like the indicator of your cellular phone the state of charge tells the charge condition of the battery in many cases you're not using the full range but a reduced range to increase the battery life. The estimation of state of charge is a fairly difficult and much studied problem. I will show on a later slide why it can be fairly difficult. A next step is to also keep track of the state of health of the battery. And right now there's an active research on models that include aging. When we talk about hybrid vehicles and control of them, charge sustaining strategies becomes an important concept. When we look at basic control for a hybrid vehicle, the state of charge after driving mission should be the same as it was in the beginning. This is important if we're going to make fuel economy comparisons. Otherwise, we could cheat in terms of fuel economy by starting with a battery that's at a high state of charge and end at a low state of charge. That would reduce the fuel consumption but that would affect future driving because in future driving we would need to fill up the battery again so therefore charge sustaining is an important part plug-in hybrids they are not charge sustaining the control of these usually have two modes the first is charge depletion where you are utilizing the electrical energy first and then you go over to charge sustain strategy this is just an illustration of 
a parallel hybrid electric vehicle where we have a small battery and we have the fuel tank and the combustion engine and the main driving is done by the fuel tank and then the battery and the electric machine is used to improve the fuel economy by enabling the effects that we have talked about previously. For plug-in electric vehicles the battery also becomes an energy source for propulsion for longer periods of time but this illustration shows that the battery needs to be fairly large to get a long driving distance. Now we have come to a point where it's natural to make a break so I suggest you take a break and then you come back and watch the continuation of the lecture.